Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to talk about sequences and how to build them. Um, I think the first step for us here is to take a quick step back and just talk about what sequences are and what they're made out of um, and what kind of differentiates a good sequence from a bad sequence. So in my experience of over seven years in, in working with sales development and, and building out these sequences through a bunch of different tools, right? I've used Apollo, I've used SalesLoft, I've used Outreach, I've used Really, if you can name it, I've probably used it with, with a client here or there. Um, sequences are probably the most important operations side of your outreach setup that, that you have. Um, so what is the um, different aspects or what are the different aspects of sequences that we need to nail, right? So A, it's the type of outreach, right? So we have a couple different types of outreach here. Right, we have manual outreach, we have automated emails, um, we have phone calls, we have LinkedIn activity, uh, and then we have like tasks, right, or or holding steps. So I want to talk about each of those really quickly. Manual email and automatic email, exactly what they sound like, right? The manual email, I would really recommend if you're a B two B SaaS company that is reaching out to a large volume of individuals, I would only use this manual email on the first step. I think that there are a ton of uh, fun ways that you can make that manual email look very personalized, even if it is going to be quote unquote automated. Okay. So in terms of how we add steps to a sequence in Apollo, right? You could see I came over to sequences, I hit new sequence, and then I started from a, a scratch or a new, right? So let's just pretend that we're doing an outreach here for um, a larger volume of individuals, right? And we have a lot of outreach to do, meaning that we're not going to want to spend a lot of time um, reaching out to people individually, right? So the automated email for step one sounds right there. Now, this is an important piece as well. I would, I would definitely give yourself a little buffer here, right? And 30 minutes, I think, is okay. The reason behind that is if you add a contact to a sequence and you have an automated first step, right? You can come into your sequence and you can see, and we're just gonna save that really quick. You can see which emails are scheduled. And as soon as you add contacts to a sequence and they're in an automated step, it'll combine their personal information along with the content of that automated message. Now, what do we include in that automated message, okay? So for this first example, we're gonna stay pretty basic, okay? We're then going to get into a bit more complex messaging, such as if then statements. But let's just talk about how we would build out this first sequence. And for this example, I want to just pretend that we're using, um, let's pretend that we're reaching out to agency owners that are looking to, um, I don't know, let's say integrate all of their social media uh, components together. Okay. So, first piece here is going to be a, a catchy subject line. So for something like that, I would say um, spending too much time um, publishing your content. And I always like to leave that last word capitalized. Um, it's just a little trick that I've picked up from Google servers over the years. Okay, so spending too much time on your content. So I'm gonna say, hey, and then here's where um, Apollo I think is really great. The dynamic fields here are awesome. So any field on a contact level or on a account level, right? You're able to draw in directly, right? So let's just give this uh, a quick look here and there's a preview button over here. So I wanna see here just to see if this is working, right? So we're using um, the, the first name dynamic fields, right? So let's just pull me up and let's just see if it automates that. It does, see how it changes from um whatever the the verbiage there was to to michael that's a good sign that means we're on the right track okay um so let me go back to editing here i want to say hey first name um and this is a little bit of email composition stuff here which we'll get into later um in our in our tutorial but i'm going to say something along the lines of are you spending too much time publishing your content to your social channels. Rich has developed a tool to seamlessly 
integrate your social media platforms and we'd love to show you how to publish on every channel with a single okay, something simple like that um, and then obviously call to action you always have to have a call to action in your messages or else you're not doing sales um, would you have time to chat next week um, how's and then we could throw in a dynamic variable here right something like uh, days from now. So I could say um, now weekday. I could I could change this into now weekday plus two is how it would look, and then that would come out as a Friday if I'm recording on a Wednesday. Okay. So for now, we're just going to keep this simple. As I said, we're going to get into a pretty complex messaging um, run through. But how's next week look on your end? And I'm just going to say best, and then I'm going to throw in a. a sender first name okay so hmm. here is our first email right and i'm not going to save this right now uh actually yeah let's go ahead and save that okay so in apollo a, a really important piece to to take advantage of here is this a b testing thing okay so a b testing basically says hey if i put 100 people into a sequence right and i have a couple different versions of this sequence which um people are going to receive which content so what I'd like to do here and recommend you guys doing is I would try to focus on a single variable, right? Now, the variable that I've chosen here is the subject line, okay? So I wanna test if the subject line is going to make a large difference in terms of email open rate, email reply rate, uh, and number of clicks slash number of views per email, right? So instead of changing a bunch of things and trying to figure out, hey, this is good, this is bad, we want to focus on a singular field or aspect of this email. So I picked the subject line. You could pick really anything, right? It could be the sign off. It could be the, the welcome. It could be the content of the actual email. Um, but for right now, let's say um, tired of wasting time um, uploading content to social. Right, something like that, right? So if I save this, right? And let's say that I were to add 50 people into this sequence, 25 of them are gonna receive this message, 25 are gonna receive that message. What does this help us with? This is a really, really important part. A, it helps a ton with deliverability, guys. So if you're sending out a thousand of the same messages every day with one or two minor tweaks, Google slash Outlook is going to pick up on that and they're gonna mark you as spam. Now, this is not a foolproof method here, but what I usually like to do, and I can show you guys later in my um, in my client's sequences here, I, I like to do around eight of these um, slight tweaks per message um, for every step of every sequence that there's an email involved. It helps a ton. It gets your open rates up to, and I can show you guys that really quick here. It gets your open rates all the way up to around a 70% level, okay? And uh, you can see the reply rates are strong. The interested rates are also strong. So um, that is the first piece there. Now let's say we want to add a couple more steps here, right? So we have a phone call step. This is going to be, um, you know, pulled up in the person's like today do tasks, right? Now what I would recommend here is I would never use this the immediately after previous step. Um, unless you're a shop that really values a quick phone call after an email being sent. I do not. I don't think that that's actually beneficial. Um, and I think it adds a little layer of pestering on the prospect side if they're getting an email from us and then we're calling them immediately. So I usually like to do day one email, day three email, day four call, then a bunch of automated email steps, and then a call step at the end and call it a day. So that's what we're gonna make here super quick. And I'm just gonna make the skeleton outline here. Uh, okay, so let's say that we put this two days out, right? And I hit continue. So now we have this phone call, right? Now, I just mentioned, and I did this one on purpose for you guys. I just mentioned that I actually like an automated email on day three, right? Now, if I were to add a step here, right? And send an automated email and say one day after, right? That's going to give me the email on day four, okay? Now, how do I swap these orders? 
this button here, if you click and hold, will swap the order of your steps. Um, but one word of advice is the original kind of settings that you had set um, will still apply. So we just have to come in here and kind of correct this. Okay. So we're going to say day one, day three, day four, phone call. Um, and then we are going to keep adding steps. We're going to add more automatic emails. Um, now, one last thing on the, on the email side. Okay. So there's a big difference here between a reply email and a new thread. If I hit reply here, this subject line is going to go away because it's going to pull a uh, previous message that we sent this person, depending on the variant or a B test that they were included in. And it's going to be a R E then that subject line. And then our new message along with the original message beneath it, right? So if you're writing incredible content on that first step, I would recommend this reply state because you're then able to get that top notch or high quality content into your second email to that prospect. Okay? Now, if you're more spray and pray kind of here, um, I think that separating out your emails with maybe one or two reply messages out of the seven or eight that you send, I think that's a nice, healthy medium, but I would not recommend going, um, you know, spray and pray, everything's a reply to the original. Um, it's not a good step because if you end up in spam on one of them, you're in spam on all of them, right? Now, if you're confident that your first email was great and it's not in spam, then it's fine, right? Because you're reminding the person of the incredible research that you did, plus you're asking them for that meeting or that call to action, okay? So this is generally my thoughts on sequence building. Our next tutorial here is going to get into if then statements and how to build out more complex sequences. Okay. So stay tuned. Coming soon. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Thanks very much.